Hello. Uh, yeah, so I'm Dan Blows. I've been coding PHP for about 10 years, I think since about WordPress version 1.5, somewhere around there. Um, for anyone that's come along wondering uh, what happened to PHP 6, uh, we just skipped over it entirely. The main feature that was supposed to be in PHP 6 was native Unicode support. But unfortunately, it proved to be so difficult that it was just abandoned entirely, and all of the features, uh, other features from PHP 6, were backported into PHP 5, and then work started on PHP 7. Now, the main feature of PHP 7 is something that most of us won't see at all day to day, and that's because it's how PHP is actually executed. Um, because PHP is an interpreted language, it first has to go from the PHP that we write into machine code that the computer can execute. And in uh, PHP 5, it did this by scanning ahead and taking complete instructions and then turning those into machine code straight away. Now, it's a little bit outside what I can talk about in 10 minutes, but the internals team decided to go with a system called the abstract syntax tree as a step in the middle, which allowed for PHP to use a lot less memory, and that meant it could be a lot quicker. Now, if you're wondering how much quicker, I did an installation of WordPress, just a fairly standard installation. Uh, I used a bunch of the most typical plugins, so uh, Yoast and Contact Forms, that kind of thing. Um, and I just set two standard Word, uh, development boxes up. Um, they're completely identical, the hardware's the same, the operating system, everything's the same about these two boxes. The only thing that's different, one's using PHP 5.6, the other's on PHP 7. And what I found was that on request per second, I could get around 20 out of PHP 5.6, but around 45 requests per second on PHP 7. Uh, similarly, the response time uh, on PHP 5.6, I could get about 1,500 milliseconds. So that's the time to first byte. On PHP 7, that was coming out about 650 milliseconds. So this is without caching or doing any of the usual stuff. This is just literally testing the WordPress PHP. So nothing has changed on these two boxes. Just one is using PHP 5.6, the other is using PHP 7. Um, so you can serve more than twice the requests at more than twice the speed and uh, without single, uh, changing a single line of code pretty much in the average code base. So that's the main takeaway from this talk. If you care at all about performance on your site, and let's face it, who doesn't, this uh, upgrading to PHP 7 is about the biggest thing that you can do today. Um, as well as the performance improvements, there are lots of other new features, mainly about making your code less buggy and more expressive. Uh, for me, the biggest improvement is in the type system. In PHP 5, obviously, you could check that something was an object or an array, but you couldn't check for things like strings and integers. And now, in PHP 7, you can do this. So you can check for scalar types like string, integer, floats, and booleans. They work exactly the same way as the type system in PHP 5. Um, one big problem, though, for me is that PHP will still do its best to convert things between types. So if you pass an integer and it's expecting a string, PHP will still try to do its best to say, oh, OK, I'll just convert that over. And frequently, it helps, and frequently, it doesn't. The biggest source of bugs in my code is probably this. So now, in PHP 7, you've got this strict types tag, which allows you to say, if I say an integer, I really mean an integer. I don't mean something that can be turned into an integer. Um, unfortunately, you have to do it on a per file level. You, there's no global flag. But if you put this as the very top thing in a file, then everything in that file will say, if I say integer, I mean integer. Um, so you just have to do it on every single file, which is a bit annoying, but that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so return type hints, just as you can say uh, on a parameter what types of parameters you're expecting, you can also do what types of parameters you're returning. So you can say I'm returning a string or an object of a particular type, um, and this works with the strict types declaration we were just talking about and the scalar types as well. 
Cost-free assertions are a really useful feature for me because they allow me to say, um, I can pass an expression to this that evaluates to true or false, and if it evaluates to false, it throws a, an exception. What's really useful about this is I can check these in development and then turn them off in production. So I can do lots of expensive checks, and then in production, it uh, doesn't have any impact on the runtime. The error system, obviously in PHP 5, if you get a fatal error, there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. It just throws an error, um, you return something to the user, and it logs, but there's not much you can do. With PHP 7, you now have this throwable interface, so errors implement the throwable interface, as do exceptions, and you can catch that, do some cleaning up, and return a nice error. So if you're trying to catch any exceptions or errors or anything, you need to catch a throwable. Uh, the null color loss operator is just a way of saying if foo is set and has a value, return foo, otherwise return this default. Uh, you can also chain them together. Uh, you can output Unicode, which is obviously really useful. Um, <laughs> uh, this is something, the uniform variable syntax. I can't go through all the changes today because it's only 10 minutes, but this is a really important one. The uniform variable syntax just makes everything more consistent. It's related to the abstract syntax tree. And it means that you can now return callables on results of static methods and everything in ways that you couldn't do in PHP 5. A lot of these would return errors. But now you can basically string all sorts of code together so you can write spaghetti code like you've never done before. Um, However, there is one big implication with this, and this is really important if you are upgrading, especially if you're using any old libraries or anything, and that's if you've ever written a line of code like this. In PHP 5, this would be executed by looking for Bob on bar and then finding that on foo. In PHP 7, this goes the other way around. It will look for bar on foo and then look for Bob on the result. So that, this is one of the easiest source of bugs in PHP 7. Um, it's very easy enough to fix. You just wrap the part that you want to go first in curly brackets, and it just works. And there's a library called fan, which will scan your uh, PHP code, looking for places you might have these problems. So this is my main advice. Takeaway today, upgrading to PHP 7 is really easy and will probably just work. I've done three code bases now. One of them literally took about two hours. We set aside a couple of weeks, and two hours in, it was all done. Uh, Upgrading is really easy. If you've got root access to your box um, and you're on the latest Ubuntu, you can just do sudo app get update uh, to PHP 7, sorry, app get install. Um, otherwise, you have to install the repos, but again, they're really easy. Managed hosting, I spoke to most of the big providers and they've said it is coming soon. Um, things to check, yeah, WordPress core and most of the plugins just work. Um, I had a look through, and I didn't get any problems. If you're using memcache, um, some people use it. That seems to have some big bugs with PHP 7. It's worth knowing. Uh, the deprecations, MySQL functions, and eReg functions are now gone completely. So just use the uh, PHP 7 versions, MySQL, I, and preg. Um, so just really quickly, the PHP 7.1, you can now, just as you can say this should return a particular type, you can also say it should return nothing at all with the void return type. Nullable parameters are a way of saying um, you can pass null or an integer, but without setting a default value, which is quite useful in some cases. And you can also do the same with return values. Uh, the null coalesce equals just allows you to set a value on foo if it doesn't already have a value or it's not already defined. So it's a quick way of setting defaults. These three all evaluate to the same thing. List keys are really complicated to go through today, but it's just a quick way of passing in an array and then using list to write them to the pro uh, properties of a uh, method, of a class. Union exception types. If you're catching multiple exception types, but then doing exactly the same thing with them, in PHP 5, you had to do this by just copying and pasting the code into the different blocks. With PHP 7, you can get around this by just catching multiple exception types using the union operator that's there. Um, HTTP 2 server push uh, is probably worth knowing about. Um, it's too detailed to go in here, but if anyone's used the HTTP 2 system, um, it's a way of sending the CSS and images and JavaScript over with the initial request rather than request, um, requesting them after and then sending them over. So, yeah, it's too much code and too difficult to go into in 10 minutes, but 
I'll be around for the rest of the day. If anyone has any questions, uh, come and ask me.